the bustling city of Chicago during the late 1800s, a sinister figure lurked in the shadows. His name was A.H. Holmes, and he would become known as America's first serial killer. However, it was his murder castle that would cement his place in history as one of the most depraved and diabolical criminals of all time. Herman Webster Mudgett, famously known as H.H. Holmes, was a man shrouded in darkness, his life a twisted tale of deception and murder. If he did become a, a killer by whatever means, for whatever reason, that his style of killing would reflect that fascination with gadgetry and, and planning and getting the whole thing right. Fantasy to a serial killer is, is the whole foundation of why they become a serial killer. Operated during the late 19th century, one of his most infamous deeds was the construction of a hotel in Chicago, which he called the World's Fair Hotel, or the Murder Castle. He was born in 1861 in Gilmanton, New Hampshire, and later moved to Chicago. Holmes exhibited an unusual intelligence from a young age, coupled with a chilling lack of empathy. As he matured, Holmes pursued a career in medicine, but it wasn't long before his ambitions turned sinister. I was born with the devil in me. I could not help the fact that I was a murderer. No more than a poet can help the inspiration to sing. Moving to Chicago, he established himself as a pharmacist and later as a hotel proprietor. But behind the facade of his charming demeanor lay a malevolent mind. He purchased a plot of land in the Englewood neighborhood of Chicago and began construction on what would become his infamous hotel intended to use it as a hotel during the upcoming World's Columbian Exposition. The hotel was a massive three-story building with over 100 rooms. It was equipped with a maze of corridors, hidden passageways, soundproof rooms, hidden passages, trapdoors, soundproof rooms, and secret chambers where he could carry out his gruesome deeds without detection all designed to facilitate Holmes' murderous activities. The hotel also featured secret staircases and a basement laboratory where Holmes carried out his experiments on his victims. Evidence would indicate that there was some type of sexual activity with both of these victims. He may have raped, possibly even molested the children when they were, when they were put in the trunk, they were naked. He was a predator, preying on the vulnerable and the unsuspecting. He would often target young women who had come to Chicago seeking employment or adventure. With his suave demeanor and devilish smile, preyed upon vulnerable individuals, mostly young women drawn in by his charisma. Once inside the murder castle, they were never seen again. He used various methods to lure victims into his hotel, including offering them employment, lodging, or simply promising them a place to stay. Once inside, they would become trapped in Holmes's twisted maze of death. This is actually the place where Holmes murdered our great-grandfather, Benjamin Peitzel. We wanted to come and see where the site actually happened so that we could bring some sort of closure, some sort of farewell or goodbye. Some notable victims associated with A.H. Holmes are Julia Connor, an employee of Holmes who disappeared under suspicious circumstances, believed to have been one of his earliest victims. Emmeline Sigrand, Another employee of Holmes, she vanished in 1892, and her remains were later found on Holmes's property. Minnie Williams. A wealthy woman Holmes became romantically involved with. She disappeared after moving to Chicago to be with him. Her remains were discovered in a trunk belonging to Holmes. Benjamin Pitzel, a business associate of Holmes. He was murdered by Holmes as part of an insurance fraud scheme. Alice Pitzel, Benjamin Pitzel's daughter. She was also killed by Holmes in connection with the insurance fraud. Howard Pitzel. Another of Benjamin Pitzel's children, he too fell victim to Holmes's murderous schemes. The Quinlan sisters, Nanny and Minnie Williams. Relatives of Minnie Williams, they visited Holmes's murder castle and disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Pearl Connor, daughter of Julia Connor, she went missing along with her mother and her fate remains unknown. Anna Williams another relative of Minnie Williams who visited Holmes's murder castle and disappeared. Emmeline Sigrin's daughter, 
Emmeline Sigrin had a daughter who also vanished along with her mother, their fate tied to Holmes' dark deeds. These are just a few of the known victims of H. Holmes, but it's believed that there may be more individuals who fell victim to his heinous crimes. Their stories lost to time. There were many, many more victims than, than he's ever uh, admitted to killing. Many of Holmes's victims were young women who had come to Chicago seeking employment or adventure. He would seduce them, gain their trust, and then kill them, often by asphyxiation or poisoning. He would then dispose of their bodies in various ways, including cremation, dismemberment, and burial in lime pits in the basement. Despite suspicion surrounding his activities, Holmes managed to evade capture for years, his true nature hidden behind a facade of respectability. It wasn't until 1894 that his reign of terror came to an end. Arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder, and his trial captivated the nation, revealing the depths of his depravity. When Holmes was apprehended in Boston on November 17, 1894, following his trail from Philadelphia by the private Pinkerton National Detective Agency, his murderous rampage came to a stop. Holmes was ready to leave the nation with his gullible third wife. But the authorities had grown increasingly suspicious at this time, so he was being held on an outstanding warrant for horse theft in Texas. After the remains of Alice and Nellie were found in July 1895, Chicago police and reporters started looking into Holmes' Englewood building, which is now known as the Castle, in the neighborhood. Despite a lot of dramatic allegations, no proof that could have led to Holmes' conviction in Chicago was discovered. The physical evidence of the castle victims was very circumstantial, consisting of a tuft of human female hair found in a chimney flue, a burned gold watch chain, and burned dress buttons that appeared to belong to Minnie Williams, a piece of human bone that may have belonged to Julia Connor, and the remains of a child, possibly Pearl Connor. Holmes would therefore stand trial in Philadelphia for killing Pitticel, which was the most obvious murder case. In October 1896, Holmes was found guilty and sentenced to death. Before his execution, he confessed to the murders of 27 individuals, though the true number of his victims may never be known. Despite his confession of murders, including some people who were verifiably still alive, Holmes was convicted and sentenced to death for only one murder, that of business partner and accomplice Benjamin Pittisall. It is believed he also killed three of Pittisall's children, as well as three mistresses, the child of one mistress and the sister of another. Holmes was hanged on May 7th, 1896. Well, I think he's certainly America's most uh, gruesome serial killer. He was a cunning, planning killer. Arrested and tried for the murder of Benjamin Piltzel, Holmes was sentenced to death by hanging. When being walked to the gallows, Holmes remained calm and quiet. His last words were to the man attempting to secure the noose around his neck, to which he uttered, Take your time, old man. Don't bungle it. With his death, A.H. Holmes left behind a legacy of horror, his name forever synonymous with the darkest depths of human evil. Also, the murder castle became a macabre legend, and its gruesome history continues to fascinate people to this day. The building was eventually torn down, but the memory of A.H. Holmes and his horrific deeds lives on as a reminder of the darkness that can lurk in the human soul. <laughs>